which means it's time for everybody's new favorite segment. The new favorite segment. Uh, Warhammer, uh, your hammer or law hammer. Yay! Um, pal, I'm very, very into this. So this is our brand new segment where um, Tom and I are going to take turns telling each other stories. Mm -hmm. So Tom will tell me two stories, one of which is true, true Warhammer lore, one of which he made up. Mm -hmm. And I have to guess which one's which. And yes. then I will tell Tom two Warhammer stories, one of which is actually in a book somewhere, and one of which I made up. Yeah. And if it's true, then it's Lawhammer. And if it's not true, then it's your hammer. Exactly. Um, so we've got like about half an hour till we have to take a break. So we've got like 15 minutes each, I think. Okay, that most. makes sense. Um, and um, also, we're going to have to hide chat so no one, yeah, we can't neither of us can have. So no spoilers. Can have hints on this. So currently we're off the grid. We can't see what you're saying. So don't Google this. Try and Please behave. Try and see if you can try and guess play, which one's which. Try and play along. Uh, so do you want to go first or second? Uh, you go first. Okay, right. So I have two, two stories. Ooh. Two stories for you, Ben. Um, I just need to get things open. Uh, okay, right. Uh, where do you want to begin? One of them mm -hmm. involves chaos. One of them involves necrons. Ooh, I'll let you okay. choose. Necron me up. Okay, right. The first one, necrons. Uh, okay, so there is a character, just in case you don't know who they are, mm -hmm. a character called uh, Trazin the Infinite, the Eternal, mm -hmm. the Endless. The Infinite. Trazin the infinite. Cool. Okay. He's, a, he, well, he's an evil space robot. He's an evil space robot. Um, he's been around for millions of years, mm -hmm. like millions and millions of years. And <laughs> when, um, like, uh, have you? If you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy, mm -hmm. he's a bit like the collector in that. He has this like tomb world, which is a giant museum that he collects stuff in, mm -hmm. and uh, puts all of these units, uh, all of these things. Um, inside there, uh, and he's got weird artifacts from all over the world, weird creatures from everywhere. Mm -hmm. And part of what he does is he uses surrogates, so he doesn't actually have to leave, mm -hmm. and these can be like other Necron surrogates that he sends out on like tomb ships, mm -hmm. or he sends out like people, um, okay. like meat, meat men, like they can be like rogue traders or something that he... Can he like possess them? He like mind controls, question mark, them. Okay. And he's got these guys that go out all over the world. Find him weird shit, mint um, knocks. That he, uh, well, he sends them out to specific places and controls it and gets them. I don't okay. know, he has specific things. Um, on one of his things, mm -hmm. uh, please don't search this because this is recent lore, <laughs> um, of uh, like millions of years ago, mm -hmm. one of his surrogates was on a tomb ship mm -hmm. and that had gone to potentially terror mm -hmm. a long time but before in the, people before existed. people uh there's a little side tangent to go off on later um and they uh basically collect a bunch of gigantic bipedal carnivorous reptiles and they're going to bring them back mm -hmm. so he's basically got dinosaurs okay and on the way back, there is a power outage on the tomb ship where all of the dinosaurs escape. Right. And his surrogate, like, Necron tomb lord, uh, like, all of the guards are defeated, and he is killed while sat on his throne, and they had Necron Jurassic Park in space. <laughs> that is literally what happens. Well, so they're like, literally like when the guy's on the toilet and the T-Rex eats him, but that's what happens to the, the, the Necron um, commander. The Necron Lord is sat on his <laughs> throne and gets eaten by a T-Rex. Oh, wow. Do we have any details on like why the power failed? Was there like a Dennis Nedry? No, this is... Necron Dennis Nedry? <laughs> no, no, there's like no, no real extra details. This is a... <laughs> okay. uh, I've described it in more words than... Yeah, it's just one of those little, like, side... Throwaway... Throwaway, like, uh, paragraph boxed out in an army. Yeah, yeah, just a little oh detail God. about his um, okay. collecting. I like that. Uh, pals. Do we know what happened? Did he get them in the end? No, no, just they're, So there's still just a tomb, tomb uh, ship out in space uh, full of dinosaurs? Uh, it's just full of T-Rexes <laughs> um, that killed all the Necrons on board, apparently. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so that is story number one. Mm -hmm. Story number two is about Chaos, Chaos Space Marines. Um, it is a Chaos faction who are called the Corpus Brethren. Mm. And um, the Corpus Brethren are a bunch of space marines mm -hmm. who went on a like a crusade into the eye of terror mm -hmm. um and it's some like faction they're doing like a like a penitent crusade okay so they used to be loyal space marines but and they went into the eye of terror because they would been naughty something something they'd done something wrong so they're going into the eye of terror mm -hmm. and um they find this planet and they're like there's fucking beast men on this planet mm -hmm. and they go down to the planet and they're like this planet's weirdly meaty Ooh. Um, and they kill the beast men, and out of these like meaty holes, mm -hmm. like m like uh, like noise marines come out, <laughs> and they have like a fight with noise marines. Yeah. But as the fight continues, and they're like blasting each other, um, it turns out this planet that they're on mm -hmm. is actually a gigantic fat man. <laughs> right. And the gigantic fat man, he scoops up all of the space marines, he eats them, Yeah. he poops them out, and they are now chaos space marines. <laughs> cool, <laughs> and they now go by the Corpus Brethren. Um, and uh, yeah. And well, now they're just chaos space marines. Now they've been infected by the chaos space works. marines that went through the, the gutty works <laughs> of this giant planet-sized man. Was he actually like man-shaped? He's actually, um, a, it's not just like a living planet. It's, it's just a giant person. It's a giant fat man, <laughs> in, like in like a fetal position, and uh, that is how the Corpus Brethren were wow. were formed. Holy shit! They both sound kind of nonsense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I okay. Well, based on my knowledge, I know. That Trey's in the Infinite exists and he collects stuff. I've heard of him before, mm -hmm. but I haven't heard of like his Jurassic Park adventure. I recognise the name, the Corpus Brethren. That's familiar, but I have no idea. I know nothing about them or where they came from, and whether or not they've been pooped out by a giant man. I mean, inside the Eye of Terror, like warp space and real space, like overlap, and sort of any fucking nonsense goes mm -hmm. in there. Like normally, you know. 40k is not that weird a universe where you can just have like giant person planet. But maybe in the Eye of Terror you can? Ah, oh, my heart says giant man is your hammer. <laughs> but I know you love dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So maybe, maybe that one. Um. Ooh. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess that the the, the Jurassic Park is is Lawhammer, mm -hmm. and the Corpus Corpus Brethren are your hammer. Ooh, because the the, the <laughs> Jurassic Park feels like one of those little side stories you get, like a little box in the corner of a codex, where it's like once upon a time the dinosaurs. Uh, okay, we'll see what what does chat if think? chat has some opinions. I don't want to confirm. Uh, Confirm or deny. Um, uh, is Necron Boys? Um, oh shit, chat disagrees with me. Oh my god. The fat man was in Dr. Simon Clark's video. Really? Because I didn't even watch that. Uh, so, the Corpus Brethren is real. Oh my god. I need to see. I need to see uh, the so drawing of the fat man planet. Do a search of Corpus Brethren. The planet is called, or, like, Ilion? Olion? Um, uh, okay, these are the Corpus Brethren. <laughs> Uh, I guess there's not going to be a picture of this planet, is there? Um, there there's been, like, fan art of it. Um, where can I 
find the name of the planet. Oh, there it is. Right, it looks like it uh, doesn't go anywhere. Okay, but if you do a search for Oleonesis, there's there's fan art of it. Um, oh, wow, well, bam. Well, that's, that's Simon Clark's thumbnail. Oh. It's like a guy curled up. Uh, yeah, it's basically... There's just a really big fat dude that <laughs> floats around in space and <laughs> and poops. And when you go th when you go through his gut bum, it turns you evil. Uh, well, he consumes uh, all of the um, God. The, they're called like the judged or something, or the I don't know what they're called. Like oh, here we go. Uh, oh my God, I love it. They. Uh, he awakens them all, he shovels them into his gullet, the thing the size of a tectonic plate, and when they're regurgitated back into reality, I read that as pooping, uh, they are now um, Chaos Space Marines. Wow. Okay. And Jurassic Park was all made up. Oh. So, so far, we've had two... True Lawhammer stories about pooping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so I was thinking, like, if I put the poop one in, there's yeah. no way that you'll believe it's real because surely Games Workshop can't have so many things about poo. <laughs> yeah. But they do. They do have. They do have it. Um, Amazing. And um, it's all true. Yeah. God, it was. Wow. It was. Such hard work trying to come up with something as like the fake story. Because <laughs> yeah. it was like, this is so weird. This is so weird and dumb. Um, oh my God. I've heard about these guys before. They practice cannibalism. I think I heard a, like a law video about Renegade Space Marine chapters and it just kind of fucking left out the pooping out of the planet. <laughs> that they got pooped out of a giant man planet. Oh yes. Oh my God. Um... <laughs> Wow. Very good. Very good. I enjoyed that. It is hard coming up with the fake ones. Mm. But you've duped me. Oh, that puts you in the lead. I think we should keep a little tally. Very good. Uh, like, so I, um, I did test this out on Harry yesterday. Oh, okay. But he fell for Jurassic Park as well. Because <laughs> nice. uh, he was just like, it's so dumb that it must be true. Well, there's so many stories just like that. Oh yeah, that's it. Like a throwaway, like little... Um, little goofy tale. A little like snippet. Mm. Um, uh, but like, cause I've been, I was reading about tr Trey's in the infinite. Um, and there were, there were like stories of like them going and capturing stuff and those tomb ships getting overrun by the things that catch them and then just like mm. flying off into space. And then was just like, how can I make that sillier? What <laughs> yeah. can I add in there to, like that felt like a good starting point. Um, mm. Wow. Okay. Very good. Very strong. Uh, okay, I've got, I've got, I've got some war, your hammer or law hammer. Let's see if I can okay. earn back a point here. We're gonna have to go off the grid again. Off the grid. We're going dark. Um, which one do you want first? Do you want one about a... Uh, oh, uh, give me the, um, the fake one first. Oh, okay, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> do you want one about um, a Chaos Space Marine champion with a curse? Ooh. Or do you want um, one about an Imperial Inquisitor? Give me the... Oh, the Imperial Inquisitor. I'll save the curse for dessert. <laughs> okay. So, there's this Imperial Inquisitor. Right. And he's dispatched to... Um, to deliver exterminatus to a planet that has been like hopelessly overrun by a, a, a tear in the warp and a demonic incursion. Mm -hmm. Local defenders have been killed, and the only the only solution now is to just like nuke it from orbit and kill everything. So um, so he gets there, and um, he delivers the exterminatus, and the planet like burns in like raging fire. He's like sweet, and then. He checks his records and he checks like the positions of the stars and the and the planets, and he realizes there's been like an administrative error. Oh no! <laughs> and there were two. There were like well, there's like m lots of planets in this system, and the numbers have been mixed up. Oh so no. instead of purging like Stixion four, he's purged Stixion three. Oh, classic error. Which is um, 
which is not a demon world at all. It's in fact like a holy shrine world oh, so. where like pilgrims come to praise the emperor in the in the local system. Okay. So it's like, oh my god, I've literally just killed millions of like of the most devout worshippers of the emperor. <laughs> I'm the fucking worst. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I've, I've had days like that as well. <laughs> <laughs> no one must know, he decides. Okay. So he covers it up. He declares the whole sector, um, you know, like, uh, what's Latin sounding of, like, not allowed. The forbid It's a forbidden sector now. Right, okay. Um, and he decides, and then he goes on, like, his own personal crusade to, like, try and, like, undo what he's done. So he hears tales of like an ancient Xenos device that can like correct the past. And so he spends the next 10 years hunting down rumors of this like ingenious relic. And after many like highs and lows and um, near misses and like red, uh, red herring goose chases, he finally tracks down this like ancient machine of alien design. And he's, he's a powerful psyker as a lot of inquisitors are. And he's able to use his psychic powers and the combination of this like ancient machine to send his like psychic presence back in time. And he goes back to just before he destroys this planet. Okay. And he appears as like a like a like an astral projection to his sure. past self, and it's like, don't blow it up, it's the wrong planet. But his past self is like, shut up, you're a demon, you're trying to trick me. Exterminatus! Boom! Oh, fuck! <laughs> um, and so he goes back and he's like, oh, God, I fucked it up. So he goes back again and he goes back again and he goes back. And every time he's unable to convince his past self, because his past self is like this self righteous, pious inquisitor yeah, who yeah. will not be turned from his like holy calling. Um, and it's just like running into a brick wall. And he does it so many times, he overloads this like ancient machine and it explodes. And both the present and the past like Inquisitor and his ship are like shunted into the warp with this like explosion. And they're like trapped in the warp out of phase with time. And it's like he never existed. Okay. So like the mistake is kind of corrected. The planet is no longer burnt. And it's like he's never went there. But his like past soul is trapped constantly bat in a battle of wills with his past self. And if he ever like gives up for a moment or fails in this like past self and and future self, like both like forcing themselves to do it, at, at one point one of them will like overcome the other. Yeah, yeah. And then that well, will be what happened. Right. Okay. So if like the the future self loses this like battle of wills, the past self will like exist again, yeah. block the planet, and everyone will die. Okay. And so now he's like trapped for eternity, battling himself. And if he ever like flinches or, or, or has a moment of weakness, he will fail. And the past self will come back into reality and the planet will explode and millions will die. Okay. And so he's like, and that's like the end of the story. Wow. Where he's just like, this like horrible grim, grim dark ending. Okay. Holy shit, I like it. Um, That's a cool, that's a cool setting. Yeah. Uh, tell me the one about the chaos guy with the pooping curse. <laughs> 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 I wish, I wish it was pooping. If I'd known zip. one of your stories was pooping, I would have done a pooping one as well. I feel like you earned bonus points if you can find pooping involved in the story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, So the second story um, is about um, Chaos Champion of Slanesh, Lucius the Eternal. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um he's a Chaos Space Marine. He Can I get a picture of the model? Yes. Because it's fucking ugly. It's a real horrible model. Uh, I don't even know how to spell his name. Lucius. I think there's been a couple of models and they've both been terrible. This guy. Yeah, there he is. Uh, you know what? It's he looks worse from better an angle. than I remember. From like, that one shot, from that it one doesn't shot, look he's terrible. okay, but from like another angle, he looks like real bad. Okay. So like, right, just this guy. Anyway, this guy. So he used to be before he turned into that. He was like a loyalist space marine, um, part of the Emperor's children, and he was a master duelist. And he dedicated his life to perfecting fighting with a sword. Okay. And he would like seek out other other champions and other legions and like challenge them to honor duels and try to like 
perfect his art. And he was very proud and very like spiteful. And as his as his legion fell to like the corruption of Slanesh, he did too. And he realized like he was like um, he'd inflicted a million scars, but no one was good enough to put a scar on his face. Right. Okay. So then he decided that every time he'd like killed someone, he would like etch his own scar onto his body because okay. no one else was good enough. <laughs> what a nerd to do okay. it. So that's why he looks like fucked up. Like yeah, that. yeah. Because every time he's like vanquished a foe, he's like meh, master of honor. <laughs> okay, so. Um, so he fights all the way through the Horus Heresy. He turns evil, obviously. Um, and after the Horus Heresy, he's like, Zinch, uh, not Zinch, sorry, uh, Slanesh has like picked him out as like one of his chosen warriors, one of the finest examples of like Slaneshi combat. Um, and he's cursed. <gasps> because what happens is he's finally bested in a duel with, uh, with another Chaos Space Marine. And, they, and everyone thinks this is the end. This is the end of Lucius. Um, I guess he wasn't that good a swordsman after all. This, this guy could kill him. But then over the next coming days, um, this guy who killed him, his like hair started to fall out. And a few days later, like his, his power armor would like warp and shift and like meld with his body. And like everything started to, to distort and like scars would like appear up his face. And over the course of about two weeks, oh. he would like shift and merge. And eventually his own body and face would like get shrunk down and a new like s fucked up face would like come out like <laughs> okay. until eventually it was Lu he turned into Lucius and the original guy was like one of these faces like merged okay, with his armor. So. And so it would turn out that because like Lucius was such a proud and spiteful um, person, if he's ever killed in combat and the person who kills him feels the slightest sense of satisfaction or pride in killing him, then they are cursed to become Lucius the Eternal and their original soul is like bound to his armor as like a trophy. Yeah, yeah. And that's why he's got the name Lucius Eternal, because in theory, as long as like, you know, he can wind people up enough that when they kill him, they're like, yeah, fuck you, teabag. Um, he'll just come back. Okay. So that's the story of Lucius the Eternal. The, um, the question is, one time, he's died countless times, as you can see by all the faces on his Right, arm, okay. He's actually been killed a lot. One of the times he died, was he was uh, running across a battlefield and he stepped on a landmine and that exploded and he died. And everyone went, I guess that's the end of Lucius the Eternal. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, you know, it's not like that landmine could feel the slightest sense of like pride or satisfaction in killing him. But then, over the next few days, a random munition worker, <laughs> munitions factory worker, <laughs> thousands of light years away in like a hive city, a diligent factory worker who took great pride in working for the emperor in the in the forges. <laughs> I was about to say this is a joke. <laughs> Um, uh, who's like I make good bombs and I, I, I I'm doing my part okay. <laughs> Starship Trooper style <laughs> he starts to meld and before you know it in a few days time Lucius the Eternal is reborn on the other side of the galaxy um, in like the underhive of, uh, of a munitions factory right <laughs> and the story continues okay <laughs> how does he get out of there <laughs> Backwards his way out. What does he do? Like he's just like <laughs> just in the factory line. <laughs> yeah. Um Oh god, okay. Wow. Um uh, <laughs> Oh shit. I don't know, like I feel like that one has lots and lots of there's a lot of follow up questions I have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We can't go too much into questions into each other's stories. I know, I know, that's it. I know, no, for sure. Um, um, otherwise, it's very easy to start picking away at... Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> like you'll, find, you'll find holes. Um, no, I do have lots of follow-up questions on just, like, how the fuck does that work? Um, <laughs> oh. Yeah, I don't know. The, I like the Inquisitor story a lot. And, um, God, I was watching a video about um, weird weapons in um, the Warhammer universe and there was this thing which was like like a time distortion bomb because I'd not really like come across that much like super time travel stuff but then was like oh my god there's like fucking 50 different time things actually it's all over Warhammer yeah but and the, without that seeing that video I would have been like no it's not that one but yeah. now I'm like oh actually they do this all the time um, and I always, I always hate the time travel stories in 40k. Like they're very, they're not that common. 
but they always feel dumb to me. Yeah. Um, but I like that one, that like little pocket dimension. It's very grim dark. That feels like it would be in like a fucking like Warhammer like short stories novella type mm. thing. Um or God, I don't know, but or is that just like a cool sci-fi short that you saw and you just adapted it to this? Um Oh but the landmine is so dumb. <laughs> yeah. Like one is like a legit very good story of like a really really nice encapsule thing. The other one very silly, and I I do like the sillies a lot. Um, yeah, they're two very different stories. <laughs> yeah, <that>. totally. <laughs> God, really, I wanted some high contrast. Yeah. Um, oh. oh man, like. Oh, I'm really, like, really not sure. Like, the... I kind of just, like, I'm just not really sure where you'd find that Inquisitor story, where that would be set. Or, like, um... Uh, would where... it help if I told you the Inquisitor's name, which I forgot to mention, is Atlas Infinitum. Oh, great, of course. And because he is... Yeah. See, the irony there is he is forever holding up the world, and if he gives up for a moment, everything will collapse. Oh my god, I hate that so much. <laughs> that has to be true, surely. Putting a name that I hate. <laughs> god, yeah. I think almost on that alone, I should go with that fucking story. Atlas Infinitum, please. Lord Inquisitor Atlas Infinitum, doomed forever to hold up the world. <laughs> oh... Or is that a trick? I feel like maybe that's a trick now. <laughs> Atlas Infinitum. That must be a trick. They couldn't. We can't have, um, what's this guy called? Lucius the Eternal. Eternal. <laughs> I had <laughs> the guy, the ever living, and you, then you Atlas the Infinite. Trace of the Infinite. <laughs> Trace of the Infinite. And <laughs> yeah. God, like, There's we, a theme today. Yeah, <laughs> wow. Just long living people. Um, oh. God, it's fucking... I'm going to go with Atlas the Infinite because I hate that name and that sounds like Games Workshop would put it in. <laughs> Although I love the mind, the mind story and I hope that's true so I can ask some questions about it, but I'm going to go with the Inquisitor one. I think maybe that's real. The landmine thing... I think the, I, the first part of the story I think is real. The landmine bit I think is a fun add-on that you made up. Well, I, I will 100% confirm everything up until the landmine on Lucius Eternal is true. That was just backstory to explain who Lucius Eternal is. Okay. Um, he well, is a definitely a character. That's what his deal is. But it's um, just whether or not the landmine, him dying, and the, the factory worker coming back is may or may not be true. Okay, I, I think factory worker, landmine, as much as I love it, is your hammer, Atlas the Eternal. <laughs> <laughs> I think like that's that was that was the that was the nail in the coffin. Like that's that's. I feel like I, if I get tricked by this, I'm like sure. Um, that is that is law hammer. Okay. Uh, Let's see if chat agreed. Does what is chat? Let's bring back chat back up. What is chat saying? Um, Quiz the false landmine true. Oh my god. Is that the uh, is that the consensus? Ben, big brain plays, outstanding bluff, landmine is true. Yeah, everyone thinks that I'm wrong and you are right. Yeah, chat's got it right. I'm, I'm suspecting someone Googled it, but Lucius the Eternal did indeed <laughs> oh step on a landmine <laughs> and then possess the factory wow. worker. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, my God. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, fuck me. Well played. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just the dumbest story in the world. And I, it just has to be true. Um, oh. I can't believe I almost forgot to mention the name of the Inquisitor because that was where I started the story. I was like, Tom hates Ferris Manus as much <laughs> yeah. as I do. Yeah. So I'm going to make a story about a dumb guy with a dumb name. Oh, that's a great story, though. <laughs> I really like that. Um, that feels like it could could exist. Um, yeah, it feels like it. The only thing I was, again, I was like, it's got time travel in it, though. And that, I, I honestly thought Tom will say that's fake because it's got time travel in it. Yeah. So if I hadn't have seen this video the other day, mm. I would have just been like, it's got time travel. Games Workshop doesn't do time travel. And you'd be like, well, actually, they do do time travel. Mm. But I watched this video where they had a whole load of fucking 
like time travel stuff in it and was like yeah oh man we are clearly on the same wavelength <laughs> yeah fuck. but then i thought no actually there's a there's a whole bunch of time travel ones and i just don't think of them often because i hate them um, but also, I, I reworked that story a few times to try and make it not include time travel. Okay. But it, then one version of it was basically the same as the Emperor being on the Golden Throne and holding back the warp portal. Right, I thought, well, I okay. can't just tell that story again on a different planet. Like, that's... That, oh, that's shit. Dumb. And I just... All I wanted was... I wanted it to end with him... I wanted to start with him fucking up and killing innocent people and end with him eternally... His, Man, his it was the name. You fucking got me with the well, name. That's where it all started, with the name, and I can't believe I almost forgot to tell you the that, name. Like, <laughs> it was that, that fucking, oh. that last detail. I think I was leaning a bit away from it, just because I couldn't, I couldn't place where you'd find that story. Because mm. it, it was so enclosed, it wouldn't be in, it doesn't sound like it'd be in like the Horus Heresy or something. Because mm, it's like, it like a side, side thing. They couldn't think of like what book it would be in, even. Um... Like that isn't like a super fun story for to be in like a witch hunters codex or inquisitor codex. Mm. But then it might be in some random book about some random inquisitor. Yeah, like, if, um, but it wouldn't be part of like a bigger story. Like, man, I should have like followed my gut. But Atlas, the Atlas <laughs> <laughs> Infinitum. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like just got me, just got me so <laughs> bad. The fucking bait on the hook. Fucking like, just well played. <laughs> like, man. Good oh. job. Well, well played. Thanks, man. Oh, we're one each then. Yeah. Both fooled this time. I like it. I like that we both tri got tricked <laughs> each other. Because <laughs> yeah. if we were just always identifying it, um, does this mean that we're really smart or Games Workshop lore is really stupid? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to take away from from this as a uh, as a like a rule. Yeah, maybe both. Very good. Um... Wow, fuck me. Mm. Uh, I feel like you could... There's so many questions about Lucius now. Like, what could kill him? Like, is there always that cop-out, get-out clause? Yeah. Yeah, what the hell? Like, if you tricked him into, like, going somewhere and it was a trap, would the guy who tricked him get possessed? Or the guy who shot him get possessed? Yeah, or the guy who made the bullet, does he get possessed? <laughs> like, or is, there just, is it like when um, a king dies and you have like a flow chart of inheritance? Oh, right, the right of like a session, ascension. Yeah, um, so like if it's someone who pulled the trigger, that takes precedence. But if no one actually pulled the trigger, then you drop down to the next level mm, and then like, I feel like it's complicated. Okay. Is Slanesh sat there with like a flow chart? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just like, and like just ticks the boxes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If he's poisoned, like if does a, does he possess a frog? Like if he gets bitten by like a snake, does he possess the snake? Yeah, what what happens there? Like he gets stood on by a grox or whatever the fuck <laughs> they're called. <laughs> yeah. Does he then possess that? Uh, I don't know. Surely, if you knew that, you could abuse that power so badly. Yeah, well, it means he can kill, but they have to take pride. So I think he has to super taunt them first. Okay. Because if they just like cold heartedly kill him and don't give a shit, then why does the right? landmine worker take pride? Because he's he's like a properly indoctrinated like oh, I'm doing okay. my part guy. He's like okay. I'm I'm doing my part to vanquish the foes of the emperor. I'm going to make the best mines I can. Right, okay, <laughs> uh, you know what? That poor guy. He was just doing a great job oh, and he was know, really right? into it. Yeah. They lost themselves a good a good line worker and I feel in like they the probably lost factory. It, quite a lot of workers once he got possessed. Oh yeah, fuck. That whole factory is getting slaughtered. Um Yeah. yeah. Shit. Like fuck. Would you could he like fight like like a like a bloodthirst or something? Mm. Cuz they would be like, Pa, I've killed a champion of Sludash! Yeah, and then he'd just be like, Whoop, I possess the Bloodthirster now. I'm now a super Bloodthirster. Well, no, because I think oh, it always he... warps back into his original form. Oh, uh, okay. Like, they shrink and twist and contort. I, I think this goes tube in the mouth. That's the factory worker. Oh. That's his face right there. Yeah, that's better than being, like, the one on his, like, cod piece. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, wow. Okay, I like that power. God, mm. but I, I'd try and find like ways to really abuse it. Mm. Like, you go launch a raid on Ultramar or something. Yeah. Just fucking try and 
burn it, like just just get as, Gulliman to kill you. Do as much damage as physically possible, and just go on the run, and just you're just trying to ride and pillage, and just be as petty as you can, mm -hmm. and always taunt Gilliman like Gilliman's a fool, he can't catch me. <laughs> yeah. Until finally. He runs you down. Yeah, and like you play it as straight as possible. You like try and evade him. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then and when he finally gets you in combat. Because he will finally catch you. And you just taunt the shit out of him. You just, just go, like, You could never kill me. I am the greatest swordsman who ever lived. I've burnt all of your lands <laughs> and I'm publicly <laughs> broadcasting it now. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then he kills you. And then you fucking. And you're just like, lol, Gulliman's dead. You get to be you... cod piece man now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you fucking possess Gulliman. Like, I, f I think that'd be pretty That's good. That's the winner's choice. Um, yeah. God, but I guess like you oh, can't. You maybe he's just so pure and incorruptible that it just doesn't work. Oh, uh, maybe. But but if it's like pride, like surely he has. He's like, very proud. Like surely that feels like that's his biggest weakness. Mm. That he'll be like the evil is vanquished. Like boom, Ultramar is great, and <laughs> yeah. then the little head comes up. Fuck you, you little. Bit. <laughs> yeah, his hair's big, big like scars across yeah, his face. Yeah, yeah. He keeps going. At <laughs> dinner every five seconds. Yeah. Are you okay, Lord? <laughs> um, yeah, fuck. I reckon you could do that. Because you can't fight, like, um, Tyranids or something like that. Like, yeah, because they, if they, they kill don't, him, they just... They don't feel anything. They don't have any feelings, right? They wouldn't give a shit. They're not taking, like, pride. Like, maybe... Mm. Maybe, like, some of the bigger... Bigger, smarter bugs... But like, just like your average, like, yeah. like a Carnifex. Or like a Solitaire, right? Like a Harlequin, one of those Harlequins who's like, oh, I'm, I'm a blank slate. I, I take oh, no joy I take in no life. joy in this. Mm, uh, whatever. You just get like Malice Darkblade or someone like yeah. that. Like some emo elf to come along and do it. No. You get, you get a factory mm -hmm. full of workers and every day, you walk up. around and you tell them <laughs> how fucking shit they are. <laughs> They're doing fucking nothing for the Imperium. They're a waste. They hate you. Your kids are dumb. Your mind sucks. <laughs> they make loads of mines. <laughs> Just put mines all outside of his house. Because we already know he's fucking a sucker for a mine. <laughs> yeah. He's like, ah, sweet. Like a flashing light. <laughs> and yeah. blam -o. Where's he going to teleport me to today? Where do I go now? And yeah, you just have... You know, just these guys with no pride at all, <laughs> yeah. and you you make get those to make mines. Oh, but what if the guy who like laid the mine, who actually like dug the hole and like suck it down, he was like, "I'm going to get someone with this." <laughs> no, no, you whip them as well, <laughs> right? But then maybe I'd then maybe the delicious. whip master gets. Oh possessed. God, it's a it's a literal and figurative <laughs> minefield, Ben. <laughs>